Welcome back to Filter. I'm Diane Mizoda, counting down your favorite Dreamcast games. The rankings for Filter shows come directly from the responses you post on the G4 website. To make your vote count, log on to g4tv.com slash filter and select the Filter Raider. Then choose a category, vote on a scale of 1 to 10, and we'll take care of the rest. While you're there, be sure to post your suggestions for topics and games you'd like to see covered in future episodes. But let's get back to this episode. Coming in at number 7 is an RPG that takes the art of piracy to new heights. Literally. You play a cloud-faring scurvy dog who sets sail in the skies of Arcadia. Scars of Arcadia was a huge uh, RPG for the Dreamcast. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they think of RPGs, they think uh, during that time it was either a 2D thing or it was a kind of a polygon, characters with pre-rendered backgrounds. But this thing was all full poly 3D. So a lot of people got a real good taste as a different kind of RPG. And uh, it was so popular that it also moved into the GameCube. Big Dreamcast RPG that uh, introduced a cast of pirates who are actually good pirates, and you can take your ship around and have these really cool ship-to-ship -ship battles, which is probably the best part about the game. And you were always flying from like floating city to floating city, which is pretty much a standby in most RPGs. But this game, just the scope and the scale, it was so grand and cool that it made it really different fun. Okay, so the pirates in Skies of Arcadia don't exactly make your neck hair stand up, but they sure know how to dress. Anyway, our number six title is a game that takes good music, amazing visuals, and a unique concept and puts them together in a tight package called Jet Grind Radio. For all you rollerblading graffiti artists, this one's for you. Jet Grind Radio was probably one of the first games that put cell shading onto the map. It, it had a really cool art style. It had a unique combination of gameplay. And that whole graffiti thing and the look of the game really complemented each other. Just the overall style of the game, from the music to the design of the characters to the plot of, you know, you're this group of kids that's going around um, spraying graffiti all over Tokyo definitely had a huge impact uh, on the industry as a whole. For the first time I saw a trailer, I couldn't believe they were making a game based on something like this. You know, when you booted up the game, it had a little warning, you know, please don't do this, or graffiti is art. So, it's just another thing that Sega kind of did differently compared to the competitors. The Dreamcast made its U.S. debut on September 9th, 1999, and showed a lot of promise. But a mere four years later, the system was virtually forgotten thanks to the release of its three next-generation console competitors. So where'd they all go? Um, I still play it. Yeah, so I don't miss it too much. It's sitting in the closet right now, but I still pull it out every once in a while. My Dreamcast, I have actually like four or five of them in a box in my apartment, sitting away, disused, covered in dust, unfortunately. It's hooked up to my TV. I have two Dreamcasts hooked up to the TV, a Japanese one and an American one. I still play it every other day. My Dreamcast is in the basement now. My Dreamcast is in my cabinet next to my television, probably with my Nintendo 64. <laughs> I don't miss the Dreamcast that much because I still have one plugged in, so I, uh, I, still, I still visit it once in a while. Actually, I still have it. It's still hooked up in my living room. It's hard being a game reviewer to actually find some time to play older games. We were sleeping one night and a cat came in and took a dump inside my Dreamcast. <clears throat> it avoided all the other consoles, went straight to the Dreamcast. Very sad, really, but uh, there you go. And ever since then, uh, it's never been quite the same. Probably a couple of them will be sold on, uh, on eBay. I'll probably just keep one Japanese one and one US one. My Dreamcast is collecting dust in the basement. You know, there's a whole bunch of other stuff down in the basement, too, so uh, I'm sure it's got a lot of company. Well, those aren't really the creative answers we were looking for. Personally, I prefer to use my Dreamcast as a blender on margarita night. <laughs> okay, we're about to break into the sweetest five presented by Juicy Fruit, so let's get to it. Fantasy Star Online was the first console RPG to take the action online, and it comes in at number five. Check it out. Fantasy Star Online is one of the Dreamcast's greatest games. This is a game that took the multiplayer online RPG and brought it to consoles, and it did it completely different from how people were doing it on the PC. And people have lost friends, wives, girlfriends, you know, to that game. Like, like any great addictive online game, that game has, has caused a lot of trouble. Like, 
Like, just to give you an idea of how addicted I was to this game, the power went out in my apartment. Um, and my apartment had two different separate uh, fuses. The refrigerator and one light was on one, and the entire rest of the apartment was on the other. So the entire rest of the apartment, I lost power. So I unplugged the refrigerator, like dragged my TV and Dreamcast over into there and, and plugged it in just so that I could continue playing. Because there was no way I was going to stop. I was going to stop playing Fantasy Star Online. While the seminal sitcom from the 70s, Taxi, put a human perspective on cab drivers, it wasn't until Crazy Taxi came to the Dreamcast in 2000 that people realized how much fun being a hack could be. And that's exactly why it comes in at number four. Crazy Taxi was another arcade game that got brought to the Dreamcast. It was basically a game where you would drive around and pick up passengers and take them places and get money for it. It was a score-based game. Just kind of crazy. It was downtown San Francisco, and we kind of modeled after that. Um, and it was awesome music, and just basically it was like something you could play for five, ten minutes and be satisfied with. You're able to take that fantasy and, you know, just run through everything and get them out of your car as fast as possible. And you get to listen to some pretty cool music, Offsprings, soundtracks in the game. Don't turn away. Don't turn away. Crazy Taxi was probably the best arcade to console transition that I've seen. I mean, it really captured the whole craziness of the arcade game, and they had all these brand stores in there, like Tower Records and like Kentucky Fried Chicken and stuff like that, so it's a crazy game, like the name says. If you're a serious Dreamcaster, then you already have a pretty good idea of what our top three games are. But come on, what's the fun in knowing everything? Stick around, because after the break, you may be surprised at which title claimed the number one spot. And we'll also take a look at some of the weirdest Dreamcast games of all time. That'll happen when Filter returns. <laughs>